Ribbit. Welcome back to another Froggin' YouTube video, my dear tadpoles. I hope you guys are doing absolutely splendid today. My name is Pollux the Wise, and in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at three different interesting facts about the geography of the Kingdom Rush universe. Now, before we get started, uh, this is just a new series that I'm starting because there is so much to cover in this particular series. I'm not going to be able to do it all in one video. So if you guys enjoy this series, or the start of it, I guess you should say, and you want to see more YouTube videos on the Kingdom Rush Geography series, then please let me know down in the comment section below. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's just go ahead and get started. Now, one of the many things that I've noticed in my study of the Kingdom Rush maps is that there are two locations within Lanerius territory that are named after one person, the town of Odal and then the town of Odal Farmlands. So if we take a look at the map here, this is from the mobile edition of Kingdom Rush 1, if you will, you'll notice that directly south of Serogez's lair and northeast of Lanaria at the Citadel, where King Dennis lives, is the town of Odal, which if we look at the colorized version of the map, would be inside of this red circle here. Notice, however, that the angle and the portrayal of the world map here is a little bit different from the mobile edition, and that's because the town of Odal in this edition of the map, I guess I should say, um, lies east-northeast of the citadel and southeast of Serogez's lair as opposed to just directly south and then northeast of, um, or I should say south of Serogez's lair, and then northeast of the Citadel. But that is where the current location of the town Odal resides. But now take a look at this. If we go over to the Kingdom Rush Vengeance map, now the town of Odal is still in the same area. It's, you know, northeast of Lanaria's Citadel and uh, south southeast of uh, Serogez's Lair. But in the blue circle there, we can see Odal Farmland's current location, which is just absolutely insane. So there are two locations the blue circle being Odal Farmlands, the red circle being the town of Odal, um, that are named after one person. Now, I guess, I don't know, maybe it could be this person's successors, predecessors, maybe it is the same person. We don't know for sure. But I think it's reasonable to assume that there is definitely a connection between these two different locations. So moving on from that, ladies and gents, the second interesting fact that I've noticed is the area where the Anurian Island resurfaced after the events of the main campaign of Kingdom Rush Vengeance, is in a body of water that's known as the Valorous Sea. So once again, looking at the mobile edition of Kingdom Rush 1's map, you can see in that yellow circle, I know it's kind of hard to read, but it's next to the Icewind Pass there, there's clearly the phrase Valorous Sea. It's to the right of Serogaz's Lair, to the left of Icewind Pass, and north of Cold Step Mines. But that's where that body of water resides. And if we look at the Kingdom Rush Vengeance map, there you go. You can see right there, Icewind Pass is where that enormous mountain peak right there in the middle of the entire overworld map is. And directly north of that, inside of that body of water of the Valorous Sea, is where the Anurian Island is. Really, really wish that they gave some more names to the different locations inside of the Kingdom Rush Vengeance map. Another reason why it's just not as good of a game as some of the other Kingdom Rush games. And the other Kingdom Rush games... Specifically, Kingdom Rush 1, Frontiers, and Origins. They did a great job with labeling places, especially on the mobile editions. I don't know why they didn't really do something like that for Kingdom Rush Vengeance, but whatever. It is what it is. But I don't have anything else to say about this, so let's just move on to the third and final fact of today's episode, which is, after the events of the original edition of Kingdom Rush, King Dennis made structural changes to not only his castle and the surrounding lands in order to ensure that it would be safer in the event of another siege. Additionally, Lightseeker Camp was established on the island where Hushwood is to patrol the forest for outlaws and other threats. Now, this one is going to require some serious eye strain, ladies and gents, and I apologize for the horrible image quality. I will do my best to point out everything that I can as best I can, so let's just go ahead and get started with this final fact of today's video. So you'll notice that there is not one, not two, but three different bridges connecting the Citadel to the rest of the outside world. Now, I didn't circle that last one, the one that's made of stone. It's a little bit southeast of where that rightmost blue circle is. You'll also notice that there are two, not one, but two different entrances to the Citadel, at least from the angle that we can see on the overworld map, that connect the southern side of the Citadel to the rest of the paths that are connected to those bridges, connected to the rest of the outside world of the Kingdom Rush universe. And in addition, that third rightmost circle that's in red there connects the island of Hushwood directly to a path that leads past some little farmlands there that you can see that are surrounded by the little 
a wooden fence there, but it connects the island that Hushwood and the Bandit Slayer resides on to Silver Oak Forest directly. Notice that the city of Lozagon, you have to go a, a lot further down southward and then east in order to get to the city of Lozagon, which you guys can see is uh, south of the island where Hushwood and the Bandit Slayer lies. But now if we look over at Kingdom Rush Vengeance and this particular map, you'll notice that there's a ton of differences. So first of all, that leftmost bridge from the previous picture, I'll just go back here real quick so you guys can see, it's the leftmost red circle. Notice how there's a bridge there that connects the citadel in the middle to an island that's to the left or just directly west of that area. Notice that that bridge is now no longer there. If you look at the leftmost red circle here, that bridge is gone. Instead, there are now two bridges that connect Odal farmlands, one in the north to the Frozen Highlands and Sarogaz's Lair, and one to the south that goes directly towards the Silver Oak Forest. But what does this mean? It means that Lanaria's capital, the Citadel, now has no direct westward passage uh, to get to the Silver Oak Forest quickly. They've also cut off their southern land bridge there. There's actually three structural changes going on, massive ones too, inside of that biggest uh, red circle right there in the middle. So first of all, notice that there's only one entrance into the Citadel now instead of two. And the stone bridge that is there in the previous picture is still there. So you guys can see there to the southeast of that main entrance. It looks like they've kept the rightmost blue circle entrance, but they've gotten rid of the left blue circle entrance but they've kept the one that's connected closest to the stone bridge. The second thing that's going on in this picture is the fact that Lightseeker Camp has been established. So you guys can see that there. That did not used to be there in Kingdom Rush 1. That is there now in Kingdom Rush Vengeance. And um, the third final thing that you guys will notice is the red bridge, or I should say not red bridge, haha, the red circle that connects the island of Hushwood and Bandit Slayer to the Silver Oak Forest. That is now no longer there as well. It was right near the path where Lightseeker Camp was on the southwestern corner of that area. But instead, there is now also another bridge further south on the island of Hushwood that connects the city of Lozagon directly towards uh, the island where Hushwood and Bandit's Lair is that leads towards Lightseeker Camp. So what does this mean geographically for Lanaria, right? So you're looking at the path from before, Lanaria was so much more connected to the rest of the outside world. They had a bridge leading to the town of Odal. They had a bridge leading just directly west towards where Odal Farmlands now resides. And they had a bridge that connected to the island of Hushwood and consequentially another one that was just directly there where Lightseeker Camp is now established that allows them to get to the Silver Oak Forest quicker. It actually took longer to get to the city of Lozagon before than it does now. Now you can just go straight through Hushwood and it connects directly towards the northern side of the city of Lozagon. But before, you couldn't do that. Before, you had to go through Silver Oak Forest, down and around past the Twin River Pass. You'd have to go east past the city, or I shouldn't say the city, the ruins of Akaroth, and then up northward towards the city of Lozagon. But now, if you want to get to the rest of the outside world from the Citadel, you have to go past Lightseeker Camp, you have to go through Hushwood and where Bandit Slayer formerly was, you have to go through the city of Lozagon, past the ruins of Akaroth, past the Twin River Pass, past the Silver Oak Forest, through Odal Farmlands, and then up towards the Frozen North to reach the rest of the outside world. So there's definitely some major, major changes that were, uh, you know, made as a result of the ending events, the end battle between King Dennis and uh, Veznan, and also just the siege of the Citadel in level 6 of Kingdom Rush 1. Remember, that guy is where the Juggernaut attacks the capital. So after that whole siege occurred, Dennis was very, very scared. He felt very threatened, uh, and he decided, you know what, I'm going to beef up my territory. I'm going to make some structural changes to the landscape, so it makes it more difficult for the rest of the outside world to get to the Citadel. It makes me feel a little bit more safe. But in any case, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, and the start debut of this series. Like I said earlier in the episode, if you want to see more of these episodes going forward in the future, let me know down in the comments section below. And yeah, that's about it for the rest of today's episode. Peace out.